Keep it going for Taji, you guys. Did I say that right? Did I say that right? So when I was 26 years old, my wife and I packed everything we owned into storage and we moved to a seven by 11 mile island in the Caribbean. And I was super excited. So, but what happened is in the kind of months and days that led up to this trip, I kept having the same conversation over and over with really everyone. And it went like this. I would say, I'm so excited, I'm moving to the Caribbean. And they'd say, great, that's, wow, that's, that's great. With admiration and also a little jealousy. And then I'd say, yeah, I don't know how long we're gonna be gone, we're just gonna play it by ear. And they'd say, wow, that's really brave. Again, admiration and a little jealousy. But the thing is, I didn't think it was particularly brave because I had done this before. About four years earlier, I had moved from my toxic and abusive childhood with home with nothing but a bag full of clothes, and I'd started a life of my own. And so this whole idea of kind of starting over and going off into the unknown, it was familiar territory to me. However, there was something I was very scared about when it came to moving to the Caribbean, and I was getting more nervous by the day. Here it is. I was terrified to wear a bathing suit. In fact, I hated bathing suits so much, I just never wore them. I had lived in Los Angeles for almost five years at that point, and I didn't own a bathing suit. I was about to move to an island with some of the best beaches in the world, and I didn't have one suit packed. Instead, what I had packed was a pair of men's board shorts that hit me below the knee, uh, a tank top style sports bra that went from the base of my neck to my hips, and a really baggy shirt to cover the whole thing up. It may have been a beautiful island with white sand beaches, but no one was gonna see my body. And looking back, this kind of sounds ridiculous to me now, but this idea of keeping covered was also very familiar territory to me. I had been loathing my body since puberty, in part because I was the girl who grew a foot taller and three cup sizes bigger between sixth and seventh grade. But mostly, I hated my body because I was sexually abused as a child and it did a number on my self-esteem. The thing about kind of being violated when you're that young is that you learn to hate your body before you even really get to know it. So I just felt like my body was an enemy. I felt like it was something that needed to be hidden and also protected at the same time. For me, what that meant was piling on the weight, like 100 pounds more than you see now. I get, the more weight I gained, the worse I felt about my body, the more I kept it covered, and the safer I felt. It was this twisted dance, but it was a coping mechanism that worked for a while. Well, it was all about to be put to the test in this new island life of mine. So for the first couple months on island, it kind of worked out, this baggy shorts and baggy shirt thing because it was rainy season. But still, I just felt exposed and kind of ashamed the whole time. I just had no uh, experience feeling comfortable in my body. It helped that there was no uh, mirrors in these little tent cabins that we were living in. But still, I found kind of every opportunity to criticize myself and think about how fat my arms were and if my thighs were jiggling when I walked. Finally, about month number three, things changed. In fact, two things were changing at the same time. One was that I was starting to lose weight in spite of myself. There were a hundred very steep steps from our cabin down to the beach and that walk was getting easier every day. And also, I just stopped caring so much about what was happening with my arms and my thighs because I was so busy having fun, finally. <laughs> So when my friends said they were going to a swim shop, I tagged along and I thought, okay, it's finally time for me to get a bathing suit. So I found myself in this shop crowded with double D mannequins and really bright tropical prints. And of course, I went in thinking, I'm gonna get a full coverage, one piece, something tasteful, preferably in black. But I found myself instead in front of this rack of primary colored high-waisted bikinis and I was intrigued. So before I could lose my nerve, I grabbed a red one with white flowers on it and I ducked into the dressing room. I wrestled it on, as you do, took a deep breath and turned around to face the mirror. And I don't know if it was the rum punch that we had at lunch, because we drank a lot of rum those days, or if it was just the dim, shitty lighting in the dressing room, but I couldn't believe what I was seeing. My body, still curvy as ever, 
but now toned with muscles in my legs and in my shoulders and my waist long and just myself standing there with my shoulders back. I didn't recognize that girl. Well, the next day I put on that bikini and I put a towel around my waist and I walked those hundred steps down to a very crowded beach, looked around, dropped the towel and ran to the ocean. It felt like a mile from my little towel to the waves, but I got it to the water and I ducked my head under and I stood up looked around, and you know what? No one was looking at me. <laughs> I hadn't, in fact, burst into flames. I, uh, it turned out that doing this thing, this, the most daring thing I could think of, showing my body in a bikini, mattered to exactly nobody but me. I think it's the day that I started to figure out that the way I look is really the least interesting thing about me. <laughs> so for the rest of my year in the Caribbean, I wore that bikini almost every day. And in fact, my favorite picture of myself from that time is of me on the beach. Uh, I'm climbing some rocks and it's a total candid shot. I just happen to look at the camera, but I love it because I'm, I'm just, I'm not hiding, I'm not pretending, I'm not posing. And when I look at myself in that picture, I see that bold girl that everyone else saw then and I like her and she looked damn good in her bikini. Yeah.